Good evening. We begin our worship with the reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the, in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure, Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Here ends the psalm. As you are comfortable, I invite you to rise as we sing, Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought both by day and by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my soul shelter and thou my high tower. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only the first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Light of my soul after victory won. May I reach heaven's choice, O oh, heaven's song. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, 
You hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading on this Ash Wednesday is taken from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Here ends the reading. And our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, the fifth chapter. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. As you are comfortable, please rise for the gospel acclamation, return to the Lord. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. Our Holy Gospel for this Ash Wednesday is taken from Matthew, 
the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward, but when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret." will reward you. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, the one in whom our treasure is, Jesus Christ. The internet is just an awful place full of awful people. So that's what I think to myself when I see someone complaining about an otherwise awesome movie saying something reprehensible in the comments section of a news article, and seriously, I just automatically shut down whenever it's an internet political debate because we all see those around, and this year, frankly, won't get any better. And I think most of you can relate to this. Like the debates that unfold on your Facebook wall between your aunt and that random person you met on a trip you took across the country, Or the people that seem to post from their high horse about uh, the amazing life is and how hashtag blessed they are. The internet can be an awful place full of awful people. Here's the problem though. Something we ourselves are those awful people people. The internet is what it is because we use it in those ways. And sometimes we as people just aren't great. And the problem hasn't only been since the dawning of the internet. We've been awful people for most of human history. Think of all the wars, all the smear campaigns, all the misinformation against one another. Or even something simple as alienating a family member. I know of a colleague whose uncle divorced his aunt, and so this colleague's grandmother took a piece of black electrical tape and put it over his former aunt's face in the family picture in the dining room. That's a true story, I'm not naming any names. Or what about this? Have you ever taken a pen and scratched out someone's face in your high school yearbook because you hate that person? Or have you shared rumors about somebody even though you knew they weren't true, but you shared them anyway? So maybe it's not just the internet that makes us awful people. 
Here's where I'm going with this. I'm not just going to preach a sermon talking about how awful we are. I'm going somewhere with this. The uncomfortable realization that people, ourselves included, are sometimes just awful, that's what Lent is about. I know that sounds very pointed and very harsh, but in more formal terms, Lent is a period of 40 days ahead of Easter set aside to solemnly prepare ourselves for Holy Week. It represents the 40 days of Jesus spent in that wilderness under temptation in preparation for his own ministry. And Lent begins today, Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday focuses on our mortality when we remind each other, from dust we came and to dust we shall return. This season especially now invites all of you to look deep inside yourselves, to recognize your shortcomings, and use this time as a time of repentance and renewal before one of the highest holy days in our Christian tradition, Easter Sunday. Tonight's text brings our awfulness to the surface. Not the actual text itself, but Jesus' warnings with them. In our Ash Wednesday gospel, Jesus is warning us about how we conduct our lives, especially, especially our spiritual lives. What are we putting our energy towards? Jesus talks about the spiritual practices of prayer, of giving, and of fasting. Those three things. You see, back in Jesus' day, people... People were still awful. There's no surprise there. But instead of hiding behind a computer screen through the power of the internet, they had the city streets and they were um, bold enough to be awful to each other in person. There were many people, especially high temple officials, who would make an extra arrogant effort at making sure the general public could unmistakably see that they were being spiritual, that they were putting themselves on a pedestal, that they were who they were, and to watch out. They would pray loudly for people to hear them within earshot. They would sound the alarm whenever they give a certain amount of offering or alms, and they would look extra dismal, going so far as to disfigure themselves when they would fast. It was a look at me, I want attention kind of approach to their spirituality. Jesus is in fact warning us that our spiritual life, our praying, our giving, our fasting, among all the other hundreds of spiritual practices that we do, whether we know it or not, the way we do those things is between us and God. That's it. It's no one else's problem or show, and we don't need to show how we do those things. We don't need to prove anything. How we engage with God in Jesus Christ depends on where we, ourselves, and our hearts are at. In fact, Jesus says if we do those things for the wrong reasons, for the worldly reasons. We are limited to worldly rewards. Play worldly games, win worldly prizes, as they say. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This reminder can be especially convicting, given how accessible information is now. And how public we contend to be with said information. It seems like nothing is done in secret anymore. 
We know exactly how much our friends are donating to what causes around their birthdays. We see their pictures on community service sites. We know what page they're on in their devotional books. And I'll admit it, I do like posting on Facebook or Snapchat about my joys, my griefs, my goals, and sometimes pictures of food that I'm about to eat if it looks yummy enough. I don't do it often. And as a religious person, it only feels natural to include some religion and spirituality in those online reflections. So with that being said, what are we to do with Jesus' warnings that are so pointed to not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so they may be seen by others? Are we hypocrites if we post on Facebook or Snapchat about our prayer, our fast, or our giving, or our joys, or our griefs, or our pain? Quite a dilemma that Jesus has us in, isn't it? The truth is, this kind of dilemma accompanies almost every interaction that Jesus has or that Jesus teaches. Did Jesus really want us to turn the other cheek in a fight? Did he really want us to sell all of our possessions until we're destitute? Does he really want us to keep our spirituality to ourselves? Jesus isn't necessarily talking about these earthly things in the sense that we should actually do them in in the earthly or physical sense. Jesus is directing our hearts in the right direction in this more abrasive way. Jesus is trying to bring out the good in us because the bottom line is that we are mortal beings. Jesus is saying it's not a bad thing to tell others or share what you're doing if that's where your heart is also. Because it is only through the gift of grace that's given to each of you through Jesus on the cross that we truly connect and engage with God in Jesus Christ. All the rest of it is expendable. We are dust. And to dust we shall return. So what are we to do this Lent? That's the question. If we use the time to rededicate ourselves to spiritual disciplines, get back on the straight or narrow to speak, must we hide it and keep it from others to reap the rewards? We may be tempted to water down just how high the demands of our faith are, And not because we necessarily can or because we necessarily want to. But we feel better about it when we try to be more humble. But you don't have to do that. This Lent season, Jesus calls us to truly examine our hearts as the beloved children of God. What does your faith ask of you? Not how does your faith make you feel better, but what does your faith and your faith journey ask of you when you think about your life in Christ? And truthfully, that could include interacting on the internet and, and uh, not being an awful person. Big surprise there. Because contrary to popular belief, that is possible. You can be pleasant on the internet. The internet can bring out our worst for sure, but perhaps we can use it to bring out our best as well, to show each other the love of our hearts in spite of our mortality, in spite of our earthiness. For when it comes down to it, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And through Jesus, you are loved. 
and to love you shall return. So don't be awful about it. Amen. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one, Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless And we, though many, throughout the earth We are one body in this one, Lord Grain for the fields Scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. One bread, one body, one love of all. Blessing us and the blessing which we bless, and we many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord I invite you to rise as you are comfortable as we embark on the invitation to Lent and confession friends in Christ Today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days.
to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we will uh, be receiving the imposition of ashes. As you wish, you may come forward and receive an ashen cross with a reminder that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Also, in the back of the church is where we have our offering plates. Feel free to place your offering as you wish. All is ready. You may, you may come forward for the imposition of ashes. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who strengthened us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. At the end of each petition, I will say, Merciful God, I invite you to respond with receive our prayer. O Lord our God, you gather your church and call us to return to you. Accompany us through our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us clean hearts and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You sustain your creation, generous God. Supply all that is needful of life to flourish. Protect endangered species and fragile habitats. Teach us to live lightly upon the earth and to honor it as our home. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Give voice to those on the margins and resolve to world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. Loosen the bonds of injustice and bring an end to all violence and persecution. 
Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Respond to those who cry out to you in secret or in seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship, and illness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. Inspire our faith formation ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow as your disciples. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O Lord, our God, we give thanks for all your faithful ones of every time and place. Renew us by the example of their lives of prayer and service, and at last, bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. And your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you, for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for the spirit poured out on all the nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith until he comes again. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that this is not my table. This is not your table. This is not St. Luke's table. This is Christ's table. And all who believe that Jesus Christ is truly present, his body and blood in the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of sins are welcome to share in this meal. All has been prepared. You may be seated. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, Accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. 
Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close with our closing hymn. Throughout these forty days, you prayed and kept the fast, inspire repentance for our sin and free us from our past. You strove with Satan and you won, your faithfulness endured. Lend us your nerve, your skill, and trust in God's eternal word. Though parched and hungry, yet you prayed and fixed your mind above. So teach us to deny ourselves that we may know God's love. Be with us through this season, Lord, and all our earthly days, that when the final Easter dawns, join in heaven's praise. Go oh, in peace. Christ is with you. And let us remember that God loves you, and so do I.